Hello, welcome to this uh, tutorial video where I explain uh, the concept of ascending and descending pathways of uh, the spinal cord. The brain is located in the skull which is uh, far away from uh, many parts of the animal's body and yet it is able to receive uh, information from various parts of the body and it is also able to send back instructions to for example muscles and uh, glands of uh, the body. The information from the animal's body to the brain and uh, from the brain back to the animal's body travels uh, through the spinal cord in uh, what are known as uh, the ascending and descending pathways or tracts. So the ascending and descending pathways are contained within the white matter of uh, the spinal cord. You remember the spinal cord has uh, two components. There is uh, the white matter component and also the gray matter component which is centrally located. The spinal cord white matter consists of uh, the dorsal root afferent fibers entering the spinal cord. Then it also has the ventral root efferent fibers which are leaving the spinal cord. And there are also some fibers which are conducting impulses between various segments of the spinal cord. And also there are now these fibers or tracts which are running to and from the brain, the so-called ascending and descending tracts. So in this video, you will learn about uh, ascending and descending tracts of uh, the spinal cord. So after going through this uh, tutorial video, you'll be able to define the ascending and descending pathways or tracts. You will be able to explain how the nervous or electrical information travels through the spinal cord to and from the brain. You also be able to name some ascending pathways or tracts, and uh, you also be able to name some descending pathways. So on this slide, I'll begin by briefly talking about the ascending pathways. So what are ascending pathways? So the ascending pathways or ascending tracts, as they are sometimes referred to, are just uh, sensory pathways that begin at uh, various levels of the spinal cord and uh, they stretch all the way up to the cerebral, the, the cerebral cortex. They carry sensory information that uh, is de detected by uh, peripheral nerves. Normally, there are nerve endings throughout the animal's body which detect uh, this uh, stimuli from either the internal or external environment. And uh, this goes in an ascending path through the spinal cord to the higher levels of uh, the brain. So we have some examples of ascending pathways and these include uh, the dorsal spinal cerebellar tract, the ventral spinal cerebellar tract, and also the lateral spinal thalamic tract, as well as uh, the ventral spinal thalamic tract. So on this diagram, I will demonstrate how this information travels, first of all, from the periphery. So receptors, uh, for example, in the skin will pick up uh, stimuli, and then this stimuli is going to be transported to the spinal cord, and uh, within the ascending tracts or pathways, this information is going to travel to the brain and then it will be interpreted and it's going to get back to the effector organs through another pathway which is going to be described on the next slide. On this slide, I will explain the meaning of uh, descending pathways. So once the information has uh, been received through the ascending pathways in the brain, it is interpreted and uh, some feedback information is supposed to, to be sent back to the animal in order for it to react appropriately to the information that it received. So this information travels through what are called the descending pathways. So by definition, descending pathways consist of uh, motor neurons which uh, dispatch axons to the spinal cord in uh, what are called the descending tracts. So these tracts affect uh, voluntary behavior and they also regulate movement, posture and uh, secretion of uh, an autonomic nature. And uh, the descending tracts are often divided into pyramidal and extrapyramidal tracts depending on their origin from the brain. So the pyramidal tracts originate from the cerebral cortex while the extrapyramidal tracts originate from the brainstem. And we have some examples of uh, these descending pathways which can be identified on the cross section of uh, the spinal cord just like the ascending pathways. So these include the lateral ret reticulospinal tract and also the lateral corticospinal tract the rubrispinal tract, the medial reticulospinal tract, as well as uh, the ventral corticospinal tract. We also have the vestibulospinal tract and uh, the tectospinal tracts. 
So on the diagram, just like I did on the ascending pathways, I'm going to demonstrate how these uh, descending pathways uh, start from the brain. So the information is first of all interpreted once it has been received uh, through these ascending pathways. Then it is uh, sent back to the animal's body via the spinal cord and through these uh, descending tracts. So this information ends up getting to structures such as uh, the muscles in the various parts of the body as well as uh, the glands and the secretions will take place depending on the instruction that uh, was given from the brain. You have now come to the end of uh, this short tutorial video on the anatomy of the ascending and descending pathways. So you should be able to define the ascending and descending pathways or tracts. You should also be able to explain how uh, nervous or electrical information travels through the spinal cord to and from the brain. You should also be able to name some ascending pathways as well as uh, some uh, descending pathways. Thank you for watching and uh, listening.